Hello everyone, this is Vikram and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will understand how to install Minikube on Mac, the twofer Apple Silicon. So we are already in the Minikube documentation page, which is minikube.6.k8.io slash docs slash start. And uh, if you want to learn more about Minikube, you can start with this getting started section. Otherwise, you can directly go ahead and uh, install Minikube, which is basically a local Kubernetes cluster provider. And uh, these are the prerequisites. You need at least two CPUs or more, two GB of free RAM uh, and 20 GB of free disk space to have Minikube running in your system. And uh, the other thing is you need one container or virtual machine manager, such as Docker, VirtualBox, or the other uh, you know VM managers. So if you look at the VirtualBox download page, you will see that VirtualBox is available for all operating systems, but uh, for Mac OS, it is only available, available for Intel host. So if you're running Mac with Apple Silicon, so you cannot use VirtualBox. That's the reason what we will do is we will first install Docker in our machine. So I'll leave a link in the description below, which explains how to install Docker on Mac for Apple Silicon. So once Docker is up and running, so you can go to this installation page and select Mac OS x86-64 stable binary download. Uh, so you can uh, uh, download the binary like this or else you can also use homebrew to install which is you know pretty easier method. If you don't have uh, you know homebrew installed, so you can actually install it first and then run this brew install mini queue or else you can directly download this binary and execute. So let's go with this brew install mini queue first. I mean, uh, so the binary, it is very easy to download. So let's do with a brew install mini queue. So this usually takes a lot of time. So it says mini queue is already installed. Okay, so what we will do is we'll try to reinstall it. I think I already have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the mini queue installed. So now it says, Minikube is installed. So let's say that if you don't want uh, this method, so you can directly download the binary. So the binary will be downloaded and then uh, the binary will be installed in this uh, location, user local bin Minikube. Now we have, um, you know, um, uh, the Minikube uh, downloaded. So we can start the Kubernetes cluster. So we just have to do Minikube start. So we have to run Minikube start, but um, actually Minikube supports a lot of other, uh, you know, command line flags as well. So if I show you the Minikube uh, help section, so Minikube help have to show everything. Like start will start the cluster, delete will delete the cluster, status will uh, show the status of the cluster, right? And also we have Minikube dashboard, which is again a local Kubernetes dashboard that Minikube, uh, Minikube provides. So there are other add-ons as well, so which we will cover it. Uh, maybe if it is required, we'll cover it now. And then let's start with this uh, Minikube start command. So Minikube start, again, if you want to see various flags supported. So here, Minikube by default, it will automatically select the available virtual machine manager. So in case if you already have Docker installed, so it will take uh, Docker as the VM manager or else you can also provide uh, your required VM by providing it as a driver. So hyphen hyphen driver, so all these drivers are supported, key U, M, U2 and Docker, Podman, SSH, all these are supported. And uh, also by default, Minikube uses uh, two CPU and I think two GB of RAM. Uh, so if you want to supply more CPUs and RAM, so you can use hyphen uh, hyphen, hyphen CPUs and then you can give the required number of CPUs and um, you know hyphen hyphen memory to supply your own required memory and uh, that is the RAM. So let's start uh, Minikube cluster by running Minikube start. So if I want to uh, have more CPUs, I can basically provide it like this and hyphen hyphen uh, memory I can provide uh, like 4 GB, but uh, you know whatever comes default, let's go with this. So let's simply start the cluster using Minikube start, which basically pulls a base image, which is a container image that will uh, be used to start the cluster. So 
so in your case you might see a different output because i already installed minikube maybe it is taking some data from cache but in your case it might um, actually pull the image first before creating the container so it is actually creating a docker container uh, with two cpus and uh, two gb of ram and uh, the version it is running uh, is version 1.27 of kubernetes but the latest version is 1.28 and uh, if you click on the docker icon here and click on the dashboard so you will see a container which is just in the running state this is basically the minikube container and you can also see the image the status of this container so one good thing about this docker desktop for mac is you can actually click on this container and then you can inspect it and if you click on the image so the you can see which image and you can see the state of the container the platform the the cmd it is using everything so let's uh, minimize this this is not required now if you see our minikube cluster is created and also our cluster configuration is added so if I just open, um, you know, dot cube folder in my home directory, so there will be a file called config. So this file will be created by your minikube cluster, updating the context, the users, the user um, certificate, the cluster certificate, etc. So now since the cluster is running, so if you want to see the status of the minikube cluster, you can simply do minikube status. So they should uh, show you uh, the status of the cluster and also if you want to know the ip of this minikube so this is the ip address of this minikube uh, cluster and um, since the uh, minikube cluster is up and running i can simply go ahead and create a pod so kubectl run so the name of the uh, pod i wanted to create as nginx hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx so now this has to create a pod so kubectl get pod so you can see the pod is in the container creation state uh, that's re because it is trying to pull the image first now if you try to describe the pod nginx you can see that so it is trying to pull the nginx image from the docker hub and uh, you can see that uh, container is i mean the pod is started now if i can if i do kubectl get pod you can see that the pod is in the running state similarly minikube has a lot of um, add-ons as well so if i just type minikube add-ons i think it is the list so you can see there are a lot of add-ons which are uh, disabled but some are enabled like storage provisioner is enabled so if you want to enable istio you can directly enable istio from here instead of directly downloading and running istio binary you also have metal lb which acts like a local load balancer in case if you are uh, setting a service type as load balancer so this metal lb is going to provide an ip address in the range that you provided to its configuration so you also have the metrics server enabled to see the metrics and uh, you also have the dashboard which is basically kubernetes dashboard uh, so instead of downloading it uh, and uh, you know running it in the cluster you can simply do minikube dashboard this has to you know pull the uh, dashboard image and it will run it as a pod and uh, we all know that uh, the dashboard also supports metrics but if you don't have metrics server installed or enabled as an add-on so you won't see the pod metrics so it is currently launching a proxy so once it launches a proxy we can see the dashboard in the same machine so now you can see here it has uh, you know basically launched the dashboard so we have one pod running you can see various other workloads like cron job team and sets deployments uh, in fact you can see the uh, you know the namespaces so usually you will have four namespaces but uh, uh, since you installed kubernetes dashboard so basically minikube installs it in a separate namespace called kubernetes dashboard that's the reason you're seeing this you can see the uh, all the uh, you know cube system workloads by selecting the cube system namespace so these are all the events uh, I think if you go to the pods, you will be able to uh, select the namespace. I think from here it is not possible. Yeah, so from the drop down, actually you can select the cube system, and then you can see all the uh, control plane uh, pods running. So these are all the pods running, and uh, if you want to explore the services and all, you can explore it. 
so if you go to the pods in the default namespace we know that we you know basically created this nginx pod but if you see uh, so there are no metrics for this pod so if i go to the uh, list of pods you can see the cpu and mem usage is not there that the reason is uh, you don't have metric server installed uh, so what i can do is uh, i can just close this proxy session and then let's enable this what do you say the metric server so how do you enable this uh, so minikube add-ons enable the name of the uh, the add-on so let's now again this has to run as a pod so if you list all the namespaces by using kubestyle get ns so you will see that uh, i think even the metric server is running in the cube system namespace let's try to see that yeah so you can see here metric server itself is running in the cube system namespace instead of running in the separate namespace that is fine uh, if i try to get the um, you know the resources of a particular node like kubectl top node so metric server api is not available i think it will take some time or maybe you need to do some other configurations that we need to see so currently uh, if you check the logs of this pod maybe you'll have more information so kubectl logs i find have name of the pod and the name system namespace is cube system so you can see here metric store is not ready no metrics to serve maybe it will take some time so once this is ready uh, so if you do again um, you know minikube dashboard again it will start a proxy session and you will see a new dashboard again so this cpn memory uh, you know values will be available as soon as the metrics are available so this is how you use minikube so now what we'll do is uh, so if you want to stop the minikube cluster you would directly do minikube stop if you want to delete the cluster you can do delete minikube delete so once you do minikube delete it will also delete the docker container here now if you see the list of containers are not there but uh, the minikube image it should be available you can see it is downloading from gcr registry so you have this minikube image readily available so the next time if you do minikube start it will basically take very less time thank you and i'll see you in the next one